Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Martin, and today I'm going to talk about printed circuit boards, or PCBs as sometimes they're referred to. And this video is meant to supplement the videos that we've uploaded on using uh, Eagle software for schematic capture and PCB design. So today I'm going to talk about the design process going from a schematic to a PCB. And then I'll talk about what we mean by component footprints versus land patterns versus individual pads. And then finally, I'll talk about PCB fabrication and all the elements and processes that are involved in fabricating a printed circuit board. Now, if you remember, we, 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 have, we always start with a system and a system block diagram, and we break that system down into constituent elements, and we have block diagrams for subsystems and eventually block diagrams for individual circuit cards. Now, when the electrical engineer looks at the block diagram and wants to start instantiating it, the, the electrical engineer starts selecting components and creates a schematic. Now, a lot of times you've done schematics where you've either analyzed it or simulated it, but if you're going to, from that schematic, create a physical printed circuit board off of it, you want to use component libraries. And these libraries are important because they have symbols in them that, that are used, uh, that, that help you develop the schematic in preparation for making a printed circuit board. Now the schematic is in the domain of the electrical engineer and the mechanical engineer comes along and at the bottom here, the mechanical engineer is designing the chassis itself and they are worried about dimensions and where things are located in the overall chassis or system itself. And the mechanical engineer provides dimensions of the printed circuit board and that goes into the requirements for the Gerber file. And the Gerber file is the intersection of the, electrical, of the domain of the electrical engineer and the domain of the mechanical engineer. And the Gerber file is a file that you then generate using PCB tools and you hand that off to a fabricator. And the fabricator uses that Gerber file to provide or fabricate a printed circuit board and give that, gives that back to you. And then in the end, you take your individual components and you solder them to that PCB and hence, you now have a circuit card assembly. And that circuit card assembly should perform the functions that you want it to that you define from the initial block diagram on the far left. Now, the schematic purpose is really to provide a logical representation of the, of the circuit and it uses reference designators so that you can do a cross-reference to the, to the parts list to get additional information about those parts. And then it uses component symbols from a standard library to help identify component values such as a 100 ohm resistor, part numbers, part descriptions such as on here we have a microcontroller which is the description of U1. It also provides pinout and orientation information for U1 or other you know, pertinent information for individual components. Now the printed circuit board, once we get it, what's it doing? It really provides a mechanical support for the components to be soldered. It also provides electrical connections between them in terms of what we call traces. And then thirdly, it, it really transfers the, the logical representation of the schematic to physical hardware. Now, what we what the schematic cares about, it, it focuses on component values and the, and the interconnects between those components, but it doesn't care where the components are located and really could care less how big the components are. The printed circuit board, on the other hand, it doesn't care at all about component values, but it is very much interested in where the components are going to be and how big they are and what their footprints are. So, Let's talk about land patterns and pads. So on this picture, we see in the upper left, we have a, this area, this exposed copper is, is a pad. And this is eventually what a, what, a, what, a, um, what a component will be soldered to, or multiple pads. A land pattern is multiple pads based upon the footprint of the component. And I'm gonna walk us through a component that's defined by the, the terminology 0805 in the next couple slides. So the component slice or footprint itself is, is identified here by these dotted lines of an actual chip resistor or chip capacitor. And what you see on the left and right are these gray boxes and these represent these rectangular uh, 
boxes represent the, the pad or the exposed copper that the actual chip device will be soldered to. So dimensions A, B, and C really represent the dimensions of the LAN pattern that is going to be on the PCB. Now here's an example of a surface mount component that's been soldered to the board. And when we say surface mount, I put this in quotes, it implies that the component is mounted to one side or one surface of the PCB. So it's all on that one surface. And, and a lot of PCBs are, are, are two-sided. There's a top side and a bottom side where you can put components. Hence, they are mounted to that surface. And this is an example of a, of a chip resistor where the pads are much wider than the actual leads of the, of, the, of the chip resistor itself. And the reason they're much wider is it gives us room for the solder to provide both an electrical and mechanical connection of that part to the PCB. The other type of component is through hole, and this is an example of a, of a through hole component soldered to a PCB. So the component actually, the leads go through the holes in the PCB, and this red portion down here, this represents the pads on the back side, and this is where you would solder the, the resistor to the back side of the, of the printed circuit board. So back to the 0805 component footprint, what does that mean, and what does it mean in terms of the land pattern? So on the left-hand side, these are the dimensions of the component itself. The 08, the first two digits represent the length of the component, 0.08 inches. And the 05, the next two digits in the 0805 uh, descriptor represents the width of the component, so 0.05 inches. So 0805 represents the component footprint, how big the component is. The land pattern itself, the, the width is still the same as 0.05, but the length is now 0.12. So instead of being point, the, the, the footprint of the component is 0.08 long, and here it's 0.12 in, in this dimension. And this, the difference, the reason you have it on the PCB is to allow for that solder to make the connection between the pads and the actual uh, chip itself, the, the resistor. And here's a list of standard component packages. So I highlighted again, 0805 is, the, is a surface mount device SMD package type. So surface mount device package type of 0805, the dimensions reflect 0.08 by 0.05. Hence, 0603 represents 0.06 by 0.03 and 0402, 0201, and so forth. These are the, the typical dimensions of surface mount devices. Now definitions, uh, to summarize the definitions for the PCB design, is the printed circuit bar, board itself is, is just this element that supports the, the components and allows them to be interconnected using traces. The circuit card assembly is the PCB with the components installed and soldered. The footprint itself is the physical size of the component. So the term footprint originated to where, just like your foot, if you were to walk in sand, you impress an image of your foot in the sand just if you take that same component and you now press it into the sand and pull it out, you'd get the footprint of the component itself. Once you know the footprint, you then can determine the land pattern that's going to be on the printed circuit board. So again, the land pattern is at, is at least the same size of the footprint or usually bigger to, to allow for more solder to make that electrical and mechanical connection. And then the pad itself, these are individual areas of exposed copper. So multiple pads form a land pattern for a particular component. And then a trace, a trace is the term trace is just the equivalent of a wire for conducting signals. So each trace is really just a flat, narrow part of the copper. And typically we start with copper foil and start etching it away to create individual traces. And hence that takes us to part two of this lecture, which is how do we fabricate printed circuit boards? And here we have a cross section of, of a circuit board, and this is a multi-layer board. Um, and, and more complex boards are, you know, have more and more layers. For our, for our project, I, you will not need a, a multi-layer board as complex as this. But I want to talk to you about what's all involved here. And again, anything orange, this represents copper. So here, here are some plated through holes. Here's two of them that these holes traverse the entire PCB itself. And on the top, this green represents uh, the solder mass that's been applied to the top. And as you can see, 
When the solder mask goes over top of an existing copper trace, it's one color. And then when the copper trace, when the copper has been etched away, the solder mask is a slightly different shade of green. So how do we, how do we build a PCB? What you do is you start with a core, and a core represents this inner laminate, and it's, it's, it has a copper foil on both the top and bottom, on top and on bottom. So the core represents copper foil, laminate, and copper foil again. And just like we manufacture integrated circuits, we use the same process where we, we apply a photoresist to, to the top and bottom, this, this blue element here on top. And then we use a mask and expose uh, this, this system to ultraviolet light and, and it'll etch away uh, the photoresist and we are left with the copper trace on the core. Uh, these are two traces, one on the top of the laminate and the other on the bottom. So this was our original core and now we just created two traces, one on top and one on bottom. And as the, as the complexity of the printed circuit board you know, grows and you have more components and a very complex interconnection scheme, what you will do is you will start with this core in the center and you will add layers or foils of additional uh, copper on top. And how you do that is you, you, in, you put in between the core these foil layers what's called prepreg. And prepreg is the term, it's, it stands for pre-impregnated composite fibers and, and they're with a, with a resin bonding agent and it's epoxy basically. So this prepreg is nothing more than something that helps bond the foils to the core and you can add more and more copper foil to it. And you do that through temperature and pressure to get this stack up of, of uh, the core with additional prepreg layers and additional foils of copper. Now, you have the stack up and you want to start drilling holes. And the reason you drill holes is there's multiple reasons. So you can drill holes through it and you can plate those holes with copper. And hence the term plated through hole. And it's used for routing signals between layers and that's typically called a via. Anytime that you're using that to just route one signal from the top side to the bottom side or even the layers in between. Now, if you want to mount um, you know, a through hole resistor on the top and then solder the leads on the bottom side, you can also do that through a plated through hole and you, you install through hole components that way. The other type of hole allows uh, screws to secure you know, some mounting hardware where you can mount a screw to here and that screw's long enough to where it'll go through the printed circuit board and into a hole in the chassis. So you can mount that and secure it so it can withstand vibration of, or moving around of the, of the overall system. And that hole may be plated or unplated based upon what your intentions are. And I'll get to that in a few minutes. Now the solder mask, this is that green layer. And the solder mask can, is typically green, but sometimes it's been red or blue or other colors. But the solder mask serves two, two purposes. It prevents oxidation of the copper and it prevents shorting between the different traces of where you're going to you know, mount the components. So on the right hand side, what you see here is this, we have exposed copper that, that has it without the solder mask being on it. And this is just all the copper plating. And now this area right here, where you no longer see the copper, this is where the copper has been etched away. And here's an example of a copper trace for connection between you know, two different pads or, or parts that you would mount to it. Once you apply the solder mask to it, you get this on the left-hand side. And here you have, um, you know, you've got this darker color where, the, where underneath of it, the copper exists, and the lighter color is where the copper has been etched away. Now, mounting holes uh, are all about securing the PCB to the chassis, and here we have uh, a hole where it's not plated, and over here we have the hole is plated for a ground connection. So this, if you're designing a board where you need to have, a, you know, your sensitivity and you have high speed um, signals and you need to have a good ground plane in your PCB, a lot of times you will mount the, um, use the mounting hole in here, plate it, use the screw to connect it to chassis and you get a better grounding of your printed circuit board. Now the silk screen, this is an example of, of how shirts are made and the same concept in terms of using silk screens for shirts or t-shirts applies to printed circuit boards. So all of this, you know, all of this writing on the printed circuit board 
right here is used, we use the silk screen to apply that writing. And it's used to identify, you know, say the printed circuit board part number and the revision. Right here we have version 1.0. It may also include information on reference designators and other pertinent information on assembly or debug. It might even tell the assemblers, hey, install component here or, you know, critical information about orientation of the components. So the silk screen is very useful for, um, for those who are uh, going to assemble the, the components and mount them to the, to the PCB to get your circuit card assembly. And it's also used for in the future to help technicians debug uh, the circuit board in, in case there's an, an error or some component burned off. Now, finally, you get to the circuit card assembly, and here we've got, again, the PCB with the components being installed on it. Um, here we've got, you know, uh, in this area, a VIA routing trace to the backside. So this is the VIA. This trace from, from D1 goes along here to the VIA, and that trace is then routed and makes a connection to maybe some components mounted on the backside. Uh, here we have the actual silk screen, uh, the term P2. And then again, this is solder mask over, over this copper plane. And a lot of times, you know, you, you, you will etch away the copper to make traces and you'll, you, you will sometimes keep a lot of copper on that printed circuit board for either a ground plane or uh, a power plane of VCC. So uh, the idea is to not have to etch away all the copper because you definitely want a decent amount of copper to have a good ground plane and have good signal integrity uh, on your printed circuit board design. So in summary, the definitions for PCB fabrication include uh, the prepreg, which is the, you know, you know, the pre-impregnated composite fibers with a resin, resin bonding agent, or also basically epoxy, which is how you, um, how you laminate the, the copper foils to the core. And then FR4 is a common prepreg material. And you'll hear that a lot. If, if you're going to design a very high speed circuit, that, that requires some you know, significant signal integrity. FR4 may not be your uh, pre-preg material of choice, but for our applications and a lot, of, a lot of circuits, FR4 is usually ubiquitously used in a lot of circuit designs. And FR4, again, is, is gl the glass-reinforced epoxy um, laminate material, and it's, it's woven, uh, it's, it's basically woven fiberglass cloth that you, that you use in that to to help you laminate additional copper foils to the core. The solder mask is usually, uh, again, the solder mask uh, is all about preventing oxidation, and solder bridges between adjacent pads, and it's really this polymer. It's a thin lacquer uh, of polymer applied to the PCB to, to do those two functions. And lastly, the silk screen is a layer of ink applied to the top surface of a PCB to identify the components or other information that we talked about. So those, those are, are, are some of the elements in terms of the fabrication. Now we talk about vias, and the via again is it provides an electrical connection between different layers of the PCB by an electroplated, through, uh, electroplated hole through the board. So it's a, it's a via, um, just like you know, the term via is used uh, to get from one side to the next of anything. Now, uh, again, you know, it's interesting, at least in the United States, they still use the English system a lot as opposed to the metric. So a mil uh, is really one thousandth of an inch. So 20, if you hear the term 28 mils, that really means 0 0.028 inches. And you're going to hear the term typically copper weight. And what that means is the copper weight is how much that copper will weigh if I if I apply a certain thickness of copper over a one square foot area. So some certain terms you may hear is one ounce copper. And what that means is, is if I apply a thickness of 1.4 mils over a one square foot area, that, and I weigh that copper, it will weigh one ounce. And hence, two ounce copper will be a layer of 2.8 mils thick applied over that over one square foot. So 2.8 mils thick of copper over a square foot will weigh two ounces. <clears throat> so that's it for this, uh, this lecture, and I hope this helps you in your fabrication of printed circuit board.